All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to give you a real quick uh, little lesson uh, designed to uh, give you the answers to the what is symbolic speech uh, activity at the bottom of your assignment for today. Uh, so hopefully you've read this today. Uh, it's a pretty short little section on symbolic speech and some of the basics uh, about symbolic speech. And then at the bottom, you'll notice this little green section here that gives you um, some actions that happened over in the left hand side and then you need to decide whether this action by the person is constitutionally protected as symbolic speech uh, it's not pure speech meaning they're not speaking directly or if you think that action is constitutionally not protected as symbolic speech that there's some other um, reason that the government could limit that person's speech um, and then over on the side, you'll need to kind of come up with your uh, basic rationale uh, for why you chose that. Now, if you haven't done this yet, um, you can either watch um, as I go through this and kind of talk about uh, some of the basics of each of these cases. Or if I were you, the easiest and, and way that you would probably get the most out of this activity is to do this first as yourself um, and then go through this read each of the actions and then decide and then give a rationale and then go back through this in just a second um, pause the video um, do the activity then go back through it um, as i give you kind of the answer so if you uh, haven't done this activity yet i'll give you just a second where you can pause the video right now and then go through the activity do it and then come back and get my answers here that i'm going to talk about in just a second so we'll give you that moment to to pause and pause the video all right, so if you're back with us now, you've done the video, um, or if you're just willing to wanting to just go through it with me, um, here's uh, how we do this. And I'm gonna give you kind of some, the yes and no, and then give you a little bit of the rationale for you to fill in. So the first one, it says, in order to protect a, uh, a former employer, um, to protest against a former employer, an individual marches outside the business by herself with a picket sign. The state law says picketing is illegal. Uh, the individual is arrested and fined $100. So the question here is essentially, is protesting a business by walking out on the sidewalk, picketing, um, striking basically out in front of a business, uh, is that legal? Um, and essentially, uh, the answer for this is yes. Uh, picketing is legal. So you should be able to put an X right there. And then the rationale over on the side um, essentially is that picketing, striking is a legally protected um, action. Uh, that was decided in a case, a pretty famous case called Thornhill versus Alabama um, that basically allowed um, picketing because it did not inherently pose a clear and present danger. Um, if you remember the Shank case that you read about earlier, it doesn't pose a danger to anybody. So that's why that one is allowed. Um, the next one, an individual burns a draft card. So back in the, in the 70s when the Vietnam War was going on, uh, males over the age of 18 were issued a draft card that told you whether you needed to uh, join the army or not to go to uh, Vietnam. So an individual burns that card. Um, in public, and federal law says that burning a draft card is a crime. So is that a protected form of speech? <clears throat> um, in a case called United States versus O'Brien, uh, they decided that that is not a protected form of speech. And the reasons why for that um, is that the draft card represents a, uh, a government interest, um, and that the dra draft card itself is government property. So that's not a not a personal property issue. Um, and so you are defying kind of an important government interest. Again, that's one that a lot of people still to this day, <coughs> excuse me, uh, still to this day kind of disagree with. The next one, uh, a person uh, taped a peace symbol to an American flag and then hung the flag upside down in the window of his apartment. An upside down flag is typically a signal of distress or danger. This person believed the nation was in trouble. He was arrested, convicted of violating a state law against the improper use of a U.S. flag. So the question now becomes this symbol of the U.S. flag. Does this have a, a higher status um, than any other um, symbol in United States uh, in the United States government? And the answer for this is yes, uh, this is constitutionally protected. Um, 
the main ideas on this case, uh, Spence versus Washington in 1974, um, was that the uh, flag was privately owned, that it was on private property, and that there was no risk of uh, breach of peace or, as the Schenck case would say, a clear and present danger to anybody. So no, the flag doesn't hold any kind of um, special place. Like if you're doing it to the flag, then, oh, it's worse than if you were just, you know, doing it to a book or or defacing some sort some other type of property of your own. All right, the next one. Um, in response to increasing racial tensions on campus, school officials, so this is in a high school, uh, barred or banned images of the Confederate flag from their high school. A group of students filed suit uh, saying that they should be allowed to wear t-shirts to school depicting the Confederate flag to show their pride in their Southern heritage. So the question here is, is kind of multiple. Number one, we're in a school, so we're not in a a public setting. Um, so if you remember, or as we're going to come up here next week and talk about Tinker versus Des Moines, the school has a kind of a different set of rules. And the second thing that you need to understand here is that you have increasing racial, racial tension. So there's already something going on in the school that represents some sort of kind of danger to the students. Um, so this one, uh, in a case called Barr versus Lafon in 2008, so it's a pretty relatively recent case. Um, this is not constitutionally protected speech for students. Um, the school district basically can decide um, what things would, and they here's the quote, uh, substantially and material, materially disrupt the school environment. So if it disrupts learning basically in the school, um, a school district can stop you from um, wearing certain things. That's why, for instance, drug, uh, paraphernalia on shirts or beer slogans uh, or uh, names on shirts um, you can't wear uh, in school districts because they they say that that substantially and materially disrupts the school environment and they have a right to control those things. All right, the next one, an organization applies for a permit uh, to hold a demonstration on the National Mall. So this is like Washington, D.C., uh, down where all the Smithsonian is, and uh, National Mall is the same place where, like, Martin Luther King kind of held his his march. It's that kind of middle area between the Washington Monument and the um, Lincoln Memorial. Um, members plan to erect, quote, tent cities in order to demonstrate the plight of the homeless. The permit was denied on the grounds that camping is forbidden on the mall. Um, so this is a case um, called Clark versus CCNV in 1984, um, and they basically said that this was not constitutionally permitted speech um, because, and the reason why, is they um, basically it was government property, and the government basically didn't let anybody camp. So they had kind of had a time, place, and manner restrictions on people who um, camped and said, "Yeah, we don't, we don't need to." provide a place for people to camp, anybody, not just these protesters, but anybody. Um, and then the next one, uh, New Hampshire state motto, live free or die, uh, appears on license plates. An individual can, uh, uh, covers or die on the grounds that it goes against his religious and political beliefs. Um, he's convicted for violating a state law, fined and sentenced to jail time for basically covering up part of his license plate. So the question is, is that covering up of that section of his license plate, is that constitutionally protected free speech? And the answer, surprisingly, is yes. That is constitutionally protected. Um, basically, in a, in a case called uh, Woolley versus Maynard in 1977, the court said that it could not, the state could not require people to use these license plates. It said, among other things, that it's okay for, quote, individuals to hold a point of view different from the majority and to refuse to foster an idea that they find morally objectionable. And so basically a person could get a new license plate without that motto, or they could, in this case, cover up or die um, on, the, on the license plate. And then the last one um, is a really, really famous case called Texas versus Johnson. Um, an individual burns an American flag in order to protest the federal government policy. Uh, the state law says it's a crime to destroy the flag. Uh, individuals convicted, sentenced to one year in prison and fined $2,000. Essentially, this is protected speech. Um, as long as the flag is private property, as long as you didn't steal it from somebody, um, and as long as you are not creating some sort of clear and present danger for people 
um, around you, meaning someone's going to riot or someone's going to, you know, do something directly because of your speech. As long as it's some sort of protest, you can burn the flag all you want. You might find it objectionable personally to burn the flag. You might find that it's, um, you know, not the the quote right thing to do um, if you're an American, um, but um, it is actually protected speech. So uh, hopefully you kind of enjoyed a little bit of going through this on your own um, and figuring out which ones are protected and which ones aren't. Um, <clears throat> next week, we will delve into uh, Tinker versus Des Moines, uh, a little bit about school free speech, and then a little bit more about Texas versus Johnson, which is the case I just mentioned about flag burning. <clears throat> and then uh, I'll do a really quick um, set of notes um, next week. Uh, on some other free speech issues, uh, especially assembly. Uh, and then we'll take a quiz next week. Um, the quiz is going to be open note, open packet. Um, feel free to use any of the, the stuff that you have in your packet. I'm going to try to make it fairly easy for you so that you can participate um, and get points to help your grade. So uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, email me. Um, I've been at my computer almost every day and, and waiting for emails from people who need help. So um let me know. Hope you have a good day. Um, and that's about it. Go Trojans.